Hello, um, I'm Levita, Levita Savangu. I work with sound, I think about archaeology, I mind the past, and I think about the future. Um, and it all comes together, I guess, in a type of collaged environment. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm always holding, uh, chasing, wanting the energy of the life, of the lived moment. Uh, for me, um, performance is about that. It's about trying to capture and contain that energy. Uh, I think it's very, it's an impossible task, uh, but I like the attempt. And I think sound then is a wonderful way to um, speak to the live moment, but also I think it permeates the lived experience so it can become remembered. Then it helps me I think um, communicate that feeling of um, of how to hold time and how to transfer that into other people. Yeah, so I see it all as a kind of message, a way of receiving and passing on a message. So for me, like my first medium of being able to express myself fully was through like using my hands. Uh, that was like the first thing that I can remember really being able to communicate myself fully. So um, I still hold that idea. The, the process getting to the point of showing a work or of exhibition making, which I see as this kind of like iceberg, like the majority of it is underwater that you don't see. But then maybe when you come into a gallery, you see the tip of the iceberg. To get to the tip of the iceberg, the the coming out of the subterranean. Um, I've had to like be very tactile with materials. So um, yeah, like drawing, um, finding uh, bits of earth. I work a lot with shells, with crystal. Yeah, archives. Um, I think archives keep coming or maybe I keep going to the archives, of like trying to understand what is an archive. Um, I think there's so many different possibilities of the archive. There's the institutional established framework of an archive perhaps, which is, uh, I guess, the general understanding of going into a building and then digging, um, which again is very tactile, can be very intimate, think can be really exciting um, finding material that feels like it's from another time I think it's a bit of time travel you're opening drawers you're looking at things that um, have been preserved from the past so in a way you're having a, a conversation with a different time and I think that's really exciting um, and for me I think there's futurity in that process there's a way of coming into it in the present and then thinking about how I can, I don't know, be some sort of medium for the next time by thinking on how it can exist in another way. So for me, the embodiment of the archive, the living archive is really important. And by that, I mean, um, thinking about the perhaps other ways of looking at the archive, such as a kind of African context or perspective whereby oral history is so important and oral history is what is passed down so what we speak what we pass on is very much communal and it's gathering um, so for me uh, I research I, I have to research as part of my process I dig I find I look at things and then I ask myself, well, how can this now become something generative, something living, something shared, and how can it become communal? Um, so, yeah, I think it's in the spirit of that. Yeah. I don't know that I do create alternative sites of engagement. I think, I think about what is already here and I wonder about how it can be reused, misused, um, shared. So I'd say that I pretty much use common 
territories such as galleries or um, SoundCloud or broadcasting spaces to speak on on works um, but I think what is interesting really is maybe how let's say exhibition making gallery setting there's one facet but then if you think about maybe like the public program and how actually if you put energy into that we can hold other conversations that are really important that also are nuanced that go along with the exhibition so for me I've always um, always wanted to expand on that space not as something that's like a byproduct or a sideline to a show but as something that's already a part of the whole thing it keeps things moving you know kind of you make sure that the whole is getting bigger behind you so then if you go through three more of you can come through and then six more can come through and then nine more can come through so yeah i think that that's the landscape that's interesting i wonder about the impossibility of trying to understand memory of trying to capture it and contain it um, and hold it i think it's memory is time really so how can you possibly hold on to time um so i'm fascinated again with the with the uh with the thought around it and for me because I'm so fascinated with the embodiment of, of time, of art, of history, um, I think to remember can be, uh, to remember can be done through very lived um, communal rituals and experiences. But then also I think in the, in the greater context of memory when it comes to the story of diasporic peoples and perhaps um, a dominant narrative around not, not remembering or amnesia. Um, I want to balance that. I want to engage with things, with um, with ways of communicating, of sharing, of showing works that mean that we remember now. You know, not when I'm gone, not when you are gone, but like, how do we remember now? How do we tell our stories now? Um, and that's a lifelong task, actually. And that's very much about the living.